I just wanted to share that, man. This, and it's just more of like a PSA, um, not so much a, an insight message, but just kind of, you know, preparing you for some of the things that we're going to be dealing with or talking about uh, going forward and how you need to start to repositioning, reposition your mind, you know, around what's going to be shared. You know, uh, it's not so much about words as much as you may think. And kind of giving you an understanding of what I've been preparing you for, you know, with, with some of the things you've been doing. Like, yeah, why do we break down movies and why haven't I broken down movies in a while? You know, I've given you all the symbols you already need. So I, don't, I didn't need to keep breaking down movies. You don't need as many as you might think. You need to understand the producer staff. You need to understand the House of the Rising Sun. You know, you need to understand the 72 Galatia. Um, you even need to be able to look at a clown and break down why does a clown, why do, they, why do they paint a clown the way they do? You know, clowns were early depictions of Elohim. You know, so those different things like that, man. But once you, once you kind of get sort of, uh, I guess, immersed in it to a degree, it becomes, it becomes easy. Yeah, it becomes real easy. Everybody clear? Anybody got any questions? I hear you just say that clowns were early depiction of depiction of early or early depiction of Elohim. Is that what you said? Can you explain that? Give me a description oh. of how a clown. You know what a clown is? Yeah, they're painted with white faces. They got like they got okay. like a red, red like thingy nose, and then they got some stuff on their lips sometimes, and then something around their eyes. Okay. So now all you got to do is look up the Hindi Devi, D E D I. Debbie. Chief, I have a question. I was trying to understand who it was or what it was, if it was an organization or a name, but it was Rosh Rosicrucian. Rosicrucian means Rose Cross. But the name is the Rosicrucian. If you ever watched the movie The Secret, and when I came out like around 2000, the Rosicrucians put that, that was their production. They were, everybody in that film was a lot of Christian. Okay. 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 Toda, thank you so much. The Bakasha. When you mentioned the um, torch, symbol of the torch, was that also related to the Statue of Liberty? Yeah. It's all the, the, the torch of illumination. It's all, and the torch of illumination represents the sun. And the sun represents when someone goes through like their 33rd and third degree. They go, they go through their highest degree of their initiated system. Whenever you're dealing with the cult system, it's always you, you do more to get more power. It's always about that. When you read the story, the twist that you were given about the Adam and Eve story, the, the, the twist, like if I ask you, like, why did, why did they eat the fruit? Yeah, to get more knowledge, exactly. So more knowledge is, as we say, knowledge is power, even though we know that's bullcrap, right? So essentially, they want more power. So what you'll find is that when you're dealing with, and this is the way that story is depicted, not necessarily the truth. So what you'll find is when you're dealing with a cult system, there's always a sacrifice for power. And it's like, you want more power? You want more power? You want more power? You're always tempted with power. Right. So when you're looking at like the Statue of Liberty or you're looking at any initiate system or um, you're looking at uh, a, hell, even the 64 hexagrams or 52 cards in the deck, you know, five days of the year, there's systems that are built around this concept of going from level to level to level to level. Well, what happens at each level? Well, at each level, I'll give you more power. You see, so there's usually a sacrificial sort of system, whether you're sacrificing the Molech or you're like, well, you're a celebrity. You have to kind of get to that place where you start to see like the graduation. If I might have an artist that could be a music company, artist is making me four million a year. Someone said, sacrifice them. I'll give you more power. So now I, I go from this to that, you know, um, I go from just record label owner to mobile 
but it's always you don't have to do more to get more to get more to get more to get more. So it's an it's an initiate system, and anytime you have that, you already know you're dealing with lower order demons because higher order Elohim don't work in steps like that. So that's that's your first sign that something's off. Higher order Elohim don't make you climb up a pyramid. They make you strip. So the sacrifice is always going to be your humanity. You know, like get rid of your ego and you can get this. But it's a natural order of the way things work. It's not like I'm going to give you more. If the more is already there. You're blocking yourself from the more. But when you, but remember, like the anti is going to be the reverse of that format. So the reverse of that format says, do this for me, I'll take you up a level. Okay, do another thing for me, I'll take you up another level. Boom, 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 boom. And then what happens when I get to the final level? Well, I'm holding the torch now. Now I'm in the sun, I'm in the light. I have the torch. So the symbol of the fire and the sun to a parasitic elite would be like the symbol of the cross to the Christian. So a Christian wants to put a cross everywhere. They'll tattoo them on their foreheads. You know, they want them everywhere. Jesus peace. Right? So the same thing with an occultist, they're putting the sun everywhere. They're putting symbols of fire everywhere. You see, it's 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 sacred to them. Remember, this king we're talking about kingdom versus kingdom. The most high has a kingdom, Satan has a kingdom. Straight up. And once you understand that Satan has a kingdom, you understand that, that means there's an order to it. There's symbols, there's a flag. It's, you know. It's you know, it's it's an organized structure. With initi init initiatory steps. That mean that the Princess Diana and Donna K were sacrificial. Nah. They were they were irresponsible. You see, JFK, remember, all of them are related to each other, but JFK. There's only like two presidents who weren't related by blood. You know. So he would happen to be one of the ones that weren't related. But on top of not being related, he was actually trying to be a good person. And it was like, that's not like you in the wrong place for that. Like nobody asked you to come here and be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So remember, he was the one who was in support of the civil rights movement. Um, then he was talking about he was angry, like one of his last speeches where he was talking about there are secret societies that run this country and I'm going to start sharing information about them. Well, it wasn't so much that he was sacrificed, but it was like, yo, you tripping. Like, you got to go. But it, he also made for a beautiful symbol. As did Princess Diane. You want to study a secret system, study the, the, the system of the black nobility. George Bush Jr., is a member of the black nobility. That's another secret society, black nobility. You don't hear too much about that one. So is this like sun worship? Like, is that what they're doing? Or is that something different? No, nah, they, they're smart enough not to worship the sun. They, okay. The sun is a symbol. Um, there's a society of the black sun. That's another, that's another ancient occult secret society, society of the black sun. For other cultures who know better, the sun isn't that big a deal. So you would think like in ancient cultures, like let's say like even ancient indigenous cultures, there should be sun all over the place, especially if you live in a place that's stupid hot. Then you would you would have this total respect and reverence for the sun. Which again, you have the Dogon and and, and the um Turok people. Pointing to Sirius B that you can't even see. And it's the smaller star of the larger star. You would be like, why would you point to this little tiny thing when we got this hot sun over here beating down on the top of my head? Because they knew, like, man, that, that's not the most important thing. It's important. The stuff you're seeing, it ain't, ain't important. The stuff you can't see and that only a few people could see, that's the real stuff. You see? 
So if you're functioning with lower order energies and lower order demons, it's always going to be the biggest, baddest thing is the thing you're going to worship. You know, that's why in, in deeper systems, they talk about the most high as the, as the quiet voice. Well, the only way you can hear a quiet voice is if you are civilized. But if you have this wild chatter inside of your head, then the only thing you're going to hear is something that's louder than that. Now, you live in a society where there's hyper stimulation. So... Um, is there any like good symbols that we should be looking towards? Like I remember, um, like like you said, Aki Jason asked if um Mo, the Most High Yah had a symbol. Is there some that we should be looking for that are like good ones? I just told you, you their symbols are always going to be something that's on the planet. It's going to be a dollar bill or a gun or a knife or something like that. It ain't going to be something quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like the black sun behind you, behind the sun, the real sun. It ain't going to be that. Or Sirius B, the dwarf star. It ain't gonna be the dwarf star. It's gonna be, if anything, it'll be Sirius A. Give me a big one. Even though Sirius B is considered to be heavier and more dense, the little tiny one is actually more powerful than the bigger one. So they're not worshiping the sun. Because again, if you don't know, if you don't understand the symbology, they'll use that to distract you. So, like, yeah, we're going to throw this symbol. We're going to throw the wrong symbol. We're going to give you, like, layers of wrong. Just like we're going to put a cross in front of you, right? But your house, I wouldn't have been murdered on a cross. They weren't, they, they only used those for specifically for thieves. He was not murdered on a, on a, on a cross. He'd probably been hung from a tree or hung, or hung from a pole. So Constantine later in the vision, he saw the cross. And he saw an inscription in it in Latin where it said, in, in this we conquer. Constantine was called the bloody emperor, right? So he's like, we're going to use this cross to conquer other nations. So now the cross became a symbol. So it's like, it's just layers and layers and layers of wrong. So then you decide which one you're going to worship, like which, which wrong thing are you going to now worship? That's what it turns into. Instead of realizing like, it will be any of this. So when you're dealing with sun worship, it's like it's layers of wrong even in that when people are looking at the yellow sun. But if you decide to worship the sun, you're wrong. But if you even decide to give reverence to the wrong sun, you're still wrong. There's layers to it. We're also told to look at the seasons, look to the sky. We're told that. And it's tricky because we're told not to be watchers of stars. But astronomy is deep. In, in our study, the symbols of what you're seeing, what you're seeing happen with nature around you. For instance, here's a symbol right here. No geographic region is experiencing the weather that they're supposed to experience right now. And it's been like that for years. You know, like it doesn't snow on Christmas anymore. You, you know, like you could still be outside with a sweatshirt in Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Whereas we got, we start to be bundled, bundled up. You know, they could go outside on Christmas Day. It doesn't really snow that much anymore. And now when it does snow, it snows like in February, like once or twice. And then it's freezing cold all through like March. When it's supposed to be warm, yeah, rainy, but warm. But it's cold, right? That's confusion. So, so you have parasitic elite who are using weapons to control the atmosphere, to control the weather. So now when you're looking, that's one symbol. So you got to look at where the confusion is, like where the confusion is, is deliberately placed. And then I promise you, if you can move that to the side, that's where you're doing. So that goes to like relationships, that goes to gender. Um, hell, that goes to the, I, I'll go back to the Christian church. The only thing really pop, stopping the Antichrist from coming forth like it's supposed to has been the good part of the Christian church in America. They're the ones who've been holding the light. They're the ones like, no, we got to do right, do the, do the right thing, right? So then what? So then what has to happen? Well, we got to infiltrate that and make them evil. If we can make them evil, then the way is open now, because they're the ones who are holding the moral integrity in place, even though they're wrong. 
So I'm not I'm not advocating for Christianity in one bit, but there is a there is a moral integrity that that still lies inside of those systems. So we got to attack the morality of the church, right? Because again, go back to go back to early things. What it what it um in the story, the, the Bible Christian story. What did the serpent do? The serpent attacked morale, mor- attack rule. Because he said, well, yo, what, what, what were you told not to do? What we were told don't do is that. No, you not do that. So the first thing that you, that the symbol that you have is anybody that comes to you and says, you can just be free and do what you want. That's the serpent. Because if you live a little, I'm going to give you power. So it's always going to be about get rid of the rule. The rule, the rule is what's considered to be what's going to keep you locked in. Because even when you look at like ancient Babylonian culture, the Nephilim who were, who were flying through and coming through there, they were given certain technology that wasn't to be given at that time. It wasn't time for the Most High to say like, yeah, absolutely right. If you, I can speak to certain lower order entities. And I can get information about you. And then you'll be like, wow, he has power because how could he have known that? Yeah, I was given that from low or entities, right? But the thing about it is that that becomes its own prison. Because we're not recognizing that now you're breaking your integrity. Like there's a time, there's going to be a time, like for instance, if you look at old men, they always become old women. And they be trying to hold on, but they become old women, you see? And old women get tough. They get strong. They become the dudes. So the thing about it is like, boom. So that's the natural order of things if we're following a certain system of integrity. I, I was I was born and created as a man to represent a certain integral structure. So now what the enemy does is says, let's expedite that process. Right? So instead of waiting until you're 95 years old, 100 years old, where, you, where your jet just gives out, let's do something where your jet gives out today. Whether it's drinking lean, whether it's, it's steroid use, or whether it's try out the pinus. Try the pinus on for size, right? So what, what's happening is that we're given technology or we're given opportunities to take on certain things before their time. And what happens is that we lose sight of how the universe works. The universe leans towards integrity. That's why anything that maintains its integrity is protected by the universe. You see, you, you see a tiger in a zoo. That's a tiger that didn't follow the rules. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, you broke your integrity. Now you broke your protection. If a whale started to act like a like a, a, a goldfish, it wouldn't be protected. So anything that maintains the integrity of how it was created is going to be protected by the universe because it now it falls in its proper order. But, but if I can get you to break your integrity, then I can remove your protection from you. You think so? I might offer you something, a technology. That you can have things depend in. <laughs> but I might offer you technology that you have no business having now. Because your creator is like, I don't, you don't need to know that right now. I don't want you to know that right now. It comes from a time where you're going to know that. But I want it now. I want it now. I, well, then I'm going to have to remove my protection from you. Like, remember the garden or the, the God of Eden. It was said that there was a hedge around it, a protective hedge. So once I kick you out, you ain't you don't have the hedge anymore. Now why don't you have the hedge anymore? Well, because you wanted to expedite the process. Somebody told you that if you break the rules, you can get something that I don't want you to have right now. But it doesn't mean you're not going to get it, or, or maybe it ain't for you to have. I was asking them, like, but man, you can still get it, but. Now you got to work harder than you would have to work if I gave it to you directly. It could be, or it could be you wasn't supposed to have it, period. You know what I mean? If you could kind of think about certain things like, okay, let's talk about divination. 
I've, I've been saying over the years in podcasts for the longest time, y'all get too many readings. Because all those readings you get, you're not learning to fine tune your own intuition. So eventually I have to say, I'm not doing any more sessions with y'all. Not for any other reason, not like people were still paying with it, not for any other reason other than I know I'm on point. I know my intuition is right, but yours is jacked because you're relying on everything other than what the most I gave you. Well, let me rub on my crystals and figure out what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Let me cast my tarot. And, and then I broke down the tarot. I said, yo, the tarot you're supposed to stare at. I've shared that in the old podcast. These are all things that you're using to unlock your ability, but not to rely on. The tarot cards are not sacred within themselves. You, you, you know what I mean? Just like your, your divination implements are not sacred within themselves. They, they reprogram your mind to tap into your God self. But if you really move in the way you're supposed to with integrity, you don't even need it. These things are for people who ain't got no connection. And they only work for a couple of years. That's the other secret to that. Then after that, you got to start faking. You got to start creating problems. You know, I've said that before. All magic is temporary. So, yeah, man, it's um, some things you ain't even supposed to have because we're, we're blocking ourselves from the things that we really should have. Because we're not we're not functioning at full capacity, you know, you know what I mean. It's like when you, when you have children and they they be crying for something, it could be a piece of candy they seen somebody else have, and they're like, well, if I do this and I do that, if I clean up my room, if I do this, will you get no? You ain't never getting it. Supposed to do this stuff anyway. <laughs> get to it. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying. Like you, you want to you want to bargain for stuff that you shouldn't have to begin with. That's poison. But that's kind of our life. That's that's why we get strung out on so many addictions because we we disrespect time. Addictions are are just a total representation of someone who disrespects time. Because the only reason why you become addicted to something is to waste time. You know, because you don't feel like anything better is coming. So you want to figure out a way, well, damn, I got four more hours, five more hours before I go to sleep. And sleep was like, man, that's die. I just want to die. So what can I do with four hours? And then your addiction start coming. Oh, you can eat some of this. You can drink some of this. You can watch some of this. You see? But it, it's all in an effort to avoid time. So we, 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 we undergo this process of, of dissipation, you know, and we just want to, want to like, dissipate our day. Figure out things that I can do to keep me from having to understand or, or keep me from having to value time. So, yeah, you find ways to eat up, eat up the time because you don't understand what time actually is and the opportunities that time holds for you. So these are the things, you know, you want to spend some time sort of paying attention to, but you want to learn about the wizard of Avis. You're surrounded by symbols and you don't even know it because you're paying attention to the mountain of words that they throw in front of you. It ain't the words, it's the symbols I'm telling you. And for us to get empowered in this coming season, we have to understand when we're being attacked with those symbols and beat down with them. Because you're, you're attacked by them. You know, just like you have like the Green Lantern, one, one thing where he pulls out the ring and it's got the symbol of the heart. They don't say it's a heart, but it's a heart. And um, the symbol can project out. Or you got the bat symbol. But symbols are projectile. They have a frequency and a wave of their own. So you might have symbols around you that are disempowering you and weakening you, and you don't even realize it. But you're waiting for the words to come. The words don't matter. What do you think? The words don't matter. The symbols are more important. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, man. Um, like I said, I just wanted to cover those those pieces uh, briefly, and like I said, this is gonna be we're gonna go into some some fun exploration of symbols over this coming season. Even the Liberty Bell, I meant to mention that earlier. 
the American Liberty Bell is a uh, it's full of um of symbolism that's worth paying attention to. You know. So and then of course you have your old symbols like Shiva and Shakti, Shiva being a penis and stuff like that. But um you could even pay attention to Chevron. You might know what a Chevron is. Aside from the gas station place. Right. But why is there a Chevron? You know. Learn those different things. Or, or Avis, you know, Avis rent a car. Avis gets his name from Shiva. If you wanted to always look at the way energy moves in your room the same way water moves. If your if your place got flooded with a tsunami right now, what would happen? How would the how would the water flow? Right? That's for anybody. So one of the things you'll find is that energy always gets trapped in corners, just like spider webs do. So the moment you live in a place that's got 90 degree corners, you are living in the energy trap. Think about how hard it is to get dust out of a corner. Out of a quarter, you know, you got to use screwdrivers and stuff and scraping for it, you know. <laughs> so, what happens with energy? That's wrong. But when you go to your Afro Semitic roots or any other culture, nobody builds square houses. Always round, always dome. You see? Then all of a sudden, here, they make it square. They do, they do these things to keep you disempowered. You see, keep you disempowered. Why does the cathedral's roof always come up to a point? That bad energy. You see, you would think a cathedral should have some type of mechanism where you can open up the roof once in a while, like a stadium. Yeah, let this stuff out. You know. But it's just like anything, you know, there's subconscious energy that affects all of us because just like any place where there's trauma, that energy wave is still going to be there, you see. So you think about all the different ways that, that a symbol can project itself into a space and then not go anywhere, but come right back at you. you see? And sometimes it's your own trauma coming back right back at you. Those are just some of the things that, to, 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 you know, pay attention to those symbols, you know. Those different things, you want to start aligning yourself with the understanding of them. Because like I said, if you're going to start seeing stuff in the sky, symbols and all, you're going to start seeing them. You know, I want, I want to just touch on something real quick, man. Who in here is an elder? I'm going to give you an understanding of something so you get real clear on some things. How long were we told that the Most High Spirit would dwell with man? We were told in Scripture, three score and then another three score. How long is the score? 120 years. So the Most High said that if we if we do our His Spirit, which is the Ruach Hakodesh, then we've learned that the Ruach is the wisdom. So if we live by the wisdom of the Most High we should live at least 120 years. Got that part? That's why, that's why it says, honor thy father and mother so thy days shall be long. We, we can shorten our lifespan by not following the law. Easy, that's what the scriptures say. But if we do follow the law, we live 120 years. What's half of 120? 60. So, if we're supposed to live 120 years and 60 is half of that, what's middle age? 60. Would you be an elder and be middle age? Oh, wow. No. You see what happens when you F around with somebody else's calendar? Y'all over here, you ain't even middle age yet and calling yourself elders and getting ready to die. You, you better <laughs> you better stick to your own calendar. 
If you're not even 60 yet, you ain't even middle age. And if you're between like 60 and 70 and 75, you, you're, you're middle age. You're not even as healthy yet. That's because y'all used to everybody dying at 70. But then we say 35 is middle age. Or they die at 80. So you say 40 is middle age. 40 up to 60, 30, you're still considered a young person. You're still a youth. So that's just something to keep in mind. You bet the signs and symbols are telling you something different, and your own culture is telling you something different. And you're owning and allowing yourself to be beat down by something that really is not you at all. But that's a part of the confusion of the trick bag that's put in front of you. Okay? So... You're surrounded by them, but you probably ignore them because they seem small and, and minuscule to you. You know, um, anybody, like, for instance, knows that the, the Exxon gas, what's the logo for Exxon? Two intertwined X's. Two intertwined X's. There we go. It's an E X X O N. It's the word, but the X's are intertwined because that represents the double cross of the House of Lorraine. The House of Lorraine is one of your oldest royal bloodlines. You saw that all the time and didn't even know what the double, you didn't know the X's were actually crossing. But when you see a double cross, it's what it's representing. It's representing that house of Lorraine. That was on their, their uh, coat of arms. Right? Or you might look at the Amico. What's the Amico um, symbol? It's a torch, but, you know, in a circle. Torch. There you go. It's a torch. So you got the torch again. All right? So, um, and we go to Texaco. Texaco is the pentagram. All right? So I'm just using something simple like gas station because you drive past and pull them all the time. I don't even uh, pay attention. In Canada, they have Arco. Their symbol was a pentagram as well, Arco, um, which later also became Amico. Since we're talking about symbols, are there... Is there like a such thing as a dumb symbol or a symbol that doesn't mean anything? Well, it wouldn't be a symbol. My whole train of thought was like the designs on the the bottom of the public pools. Like it is that supposed to mean something or am I just kind of going off with that? If it's drawing you that it might be something, it is. I would say, though, when you have public spaces like that and you see something that, like, it looks deliberate, it's deliberate. <laughs> it's deliberate. You know what I'm saying? Um, that goes for airports. Airports is where they get super busy with, with symbols. Um, parks, of course. You know, um, in a pool, I would say so because fountains, they do a lot of, a lot of different symbols or cult symbols at fountains because fountains are actually shrines. You know, you just don't know it. So you go and they say, oh, put some money in there, make a wish. To who? To the god of the, of the fountain. You know, and you give money, you give copper. Copper, you know, can drop, conduct electricity. You know, because they don't say throw a dollar and they say, no, throw a coin in. Or something that's going to conduct electricity, you know. So, a public pool, I would, I would, just, just through my own inner wisdom, I would assume would not be exempt from that sort of ritual work. Especially you got all these people in here, you know, and all this energy being generated, and it is in water. I mean, you do see a lot of uh, adinkra symbols that are used a lot in iron work and power work, you know. That's significant because the Dinkra symbols are no different than um, your Odu or um, any other sacred symbol. They're actual forks. You know, we wear them on clothes, the Yami and stuff. We think it looks cool, but they're actual occult portals to different Elohim. Wow. You know, and they use them in, in iron work a lot. I got one more question. <laughs> Is there a specific difference between? A design and a symbol, or like a symbol in a shape. Well, it's like 
No, yes and no, because they're indifferent. It's like, who's holding it? See, guns are a weapon and money is a weapon. They're both weapons. So a symbol and a design is the same thing. You know, am I going to weaponize it or am I just going to not charge it in that sort of way? You know, so I would say the difference is in who's pouring their intention into that direction. Because if I make a circle and then put a black dot in the middle, it could just be a circle and a black dot. But if I understand that that's the symbol of Ra, then it, it's charged differently. But then for others, in other systems, that's the symbol of the mentis. It's a period. Mm-hmm. It's the mentis, right? I could charge it with that particular direction. You know what I'm saying? So um, it depends on who's holding the weapon. Now, can you still charge something unknowingly and open up a portal? Yeah, we do it all the time. You know what I mean? That's why we have to be aware of the symbols when they're when they're around. You know, um, even down to the gas stations, you go, they're using that logo, right? You go there and you give an offering. And and they give you what? Fat. Power. You see? So now you ain't thinking about it. You guys need gas. But you're not, sometimes you're in the middle of a ritual and don't know you're in the middle of a ritual. You know, like when I shared with y'all Rite Aid, Rite Aid, Rite is short for ritual. So they used to sell ritual aid. The symbol has not changed. It's still the same thing. It's just the name's changed. So once you understand that, man, you'll understand the intention that's put behind it. But at the same time, you know, um, when you look at like uh, Jezebel, what was the beef? He said, yo, she leads my people into sexual immorality and to giving giving sacrifices to idols. Right? So if Jezebel was doing that, did everybody who was giving a sacrifice to, to Molech or to an idol, did they know? Or did they just think like, oh, no, we just partying or or, or whatever it is. Did we really know we're giving our, our, ourselves to an idol? You know what I'm saying? So I would say that some of it is intentional. It's, it's the intent that you put in a design or in a symbol, but some of it is a larger paradigm that's already existing that you just form for. You go into church to go to praise God, but what am I pouring into? Well, I'm pouring into the curse. You will worship gods of, of stone and wood that neither smell nor drink nor eat. Yeah, well, that's what this building is. Or let's say if I go to the Super Bowl. Like, when you go into the Super Bowl, do you really know the symbols of these different teams? Do you look at the emblem? You know what I'm saying? Or, or when you go to a baseball game, do you look and say, yo, the whole field is the Masonic, it's shaped like the Masonic symbol? It's the Masonic compass? Why did they do that? Or are you just looking at the game? <laughs> you know, but when you're getting excited and you're worshiping these different, um, they're really, they're really Elohim, but we call them players. You're in the middle of a ritual. So I would say ultimately it's going to come down to how it's weaponized. The onus is going to be on whose intention is put into it. But can you get mixed up in it? Yeah, you can get mixed up in it. Yeah. That's why you have illumination. That's why when you said I'm in the pool and something don't feel right. You know, or as children, sometimes we see certain things, they scare us. And we don't know why we're scared. We're just scared. Certain things just don't, mm, you know what I mean? Um, and then we're trained to accept the things that are not acceptable. You know, you're going to eat this liver. You're going to eat these eggs. You know, it's stuff that if you explain to a child what that was, uh, liver is coagulated blood. You want me to eat a glob of blood? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you explain it, it's like, yeah, of course, that's why you would not like it, but I'm going to train you into accepting. You know? So it's about who's wielding it, but when you see a symbol, dig into it because each symbol brings forth a different God. Always know that. There's no symbol that brings forth any sort of earthly reality because it's unnecessary, it's already here on earth. So if I'm using a symbol, I'm trying, it's a ritual, I'm trying, uh, remember, rituals bring something from a top down. 
where sacrifice brings something from down and puts it up top. So anytime I'm using a symbol is because I'm I'm trying to pull something down. You know, even if I use a heart symbol, and a heart symbol is in a coma. That's where they get that symbol from. You know, but you have to look at it and say, okay, well, that's not shaped like a heart. You know, a heart is not such a grotesque looking thing that you couldn't make a logo out of an actual heart and say this is the symbol of love. So why do you use this shape instead? You see, so when you understand the Akoma symbol, you understand like, no, that's you bringing forth an Abosun. That's a that's a that's a deity you bring in for. Uh, Chief, uh, speaking of symbols, sure. um, a lot of the things I accumulated, like uh, a goon pot, uh, mm -hmm. my issue, lekes, could those things be incorporated now? Or do should I just get rid of them? It depends on the level that you're on. Um, if you feel like you need. If you feel like you need a disembodied spirit to bring fortune into your life, then that's what you'll use. But if you come to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you're that you are older and more powerful than Ogun and Eshu and Ochozi, then you won't use them. Because if you have an Ogun pot or if you have an Eshu, or we call it that the Yangi stone, if you have the Eshu stone. Or you have the implements of Ochozi. How do you use them? Well, at times they have to be given blood. Yeah, you have to yeah, sacrifice them. Even, even if it's your attention, even if it's your reiki, even if it's your you, you know you're singing to it, or you're giving it andura, or you're giving it water, you can just take water out the tap. No matter what, you got to give it something for it to work. Right now. Exactly. So that goes back to what I was saying earlier about a, a cult system. You got to sacrifice something to get power and it goes to the next level. So now you realize when you're working with those implements, I'm right back into the darkness of the occult. When I really have the ability to be empowered beyond what's hidden. So if I don't want to be empowered beyond what's hidden, then I'm going to stay enslaved to these things that I got to keep feeding. If right now, if I say, hey, we're all going to go into a higher level next year, what would we have to do to do that right now in this moment? Uplift ourselves to a higher uh, mental plane. Right, exactly. It's So we just make a decision. Nothing was sacrificed, nothing was fed, nothing was killed. Because remember, the Antichrist always wants what? Murder. So its first its first option is murder, where the Christ consciousness, the first option is life. So if I say I want something, then what do I have to do? Accept a new life. But if I'm dealing with lower lower order, if I want something, what do I have to do in the life? You see? So we yes. can decide right now, you know what, man, I know I got this issue, I got that. I ain't doing it anymore. I ain't gonna do it. Or that phone call I need to make, I'm gonna make that phone call. I have decided in my thought matrix on the mental plane, because nothing manifests itself in the physical plane if it hasn't first been created on the mental. And I am empowered to affect my mental. I don't need no candle or nothing to do that. So why the hell do you need rum and blood to do what I could do with my brain? Because I'm more powerful than you are. That's so right. that's how I would answer that, man. You, you want to you, you shine them up, keep them on the mantle if you want. Or you could dig a deep hole and say thank you for your, for your years of service. <laughs> you know. <laughs> or disservice. Sometimes it's also good to look over your life and say, hasn't that been working? Yeah, that's right. You know? Hey, thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Absolutely, brother. So, yeah, I just wanted to share those with some of the things happening. We're going to get up out of here. I see some of the changes that are coming, and there's a, there's a whole keep more of changes on, on the way. At Anu Life Global Ministries, 
We aim to restore family and culture in line with the design of the Creator. Your contributions help support our various programs and ministries from spiritual retreats, community outreach, literary publishing, supplies for our work in Ghana, and much more. Visit our website and donate today at www.anulifeglobal.org forward slash give. You can make a healthy impact too.